This video is part of a series exploring how to draw some of the diagrams in the book Quadrivium. All right then, dudes. So this time we're going to be looking at page 89 of the book. On the page before it, it says that there is no more famous a geometric object on Earth than the Great Pyramid at Giza in Egypt. The five diagrams opposite show the square of the height is equal to the area of each face. Now... I'm no maths guy. I like to just draw this stuff. <laughs> and I like I like to use my intuition more than to really like understand the mathematics behind all this stuff. So a lot of this means nothing to me. Pi in the pyramid. Pi defines the ratio between uh, a pentagram defining a net for the pyramid. That one I understand. But anyway... So it says here that the pyramid functions as a ridiculously accurate sundial, star observatory, land surveying tool, and repository for weights and measures standards. Written into the design are highly accurate measurements of the Earth, detailed astronomical data, and these simple geometric lessons. A 3-4-5 triangle fits the shape of the king's chamber and also gives the angle of slope of the second pyramid at Giza. See, I, I wonder if this is, I wonder how much truth there is in this. Like, how, how did they measure the pyramid and how do they know exactly the size and angles and everything? Maybe it's not that hard to do. I don't know. But anyway, this one, this one interests me. I think that's pretty cool. Is it true? I have no idea. But we're going to try and draw that one now. Constructing the pyramid from a pentagram drawn in a circle. Let's do it. All right, so we need to start off with a line down the middle. And then we'll draw a circle. And I need to divide this circle up into five, don't I, for the star. So we're going to need the horizontal line. Let's open the compass up to any size and put a arc. Come down to the bottom and cross that arc. And then we can join that to the center to find the horizontal. And then I'll set my compass back to the size of the first circle. Come over here to the right. Put a mark that crosses the circle at the top and the bottom. And join those two together. Just put the mark on the horizontal line. And then I need to put my compass point on that mark and open it up to the top of the circle. And I'll put a mark on the left. And then I can just go to the top, open my compass up to that intersection. And then I can use this to divide it up into five. So I'll put a mark on the left, mark on the right, and then use those points to work my way down. Put two more marks. And then I can join those together to make the star. And then I have to put the compass in the middle and use the points where the star crosses itself. So it's the outside of the pentagon that's in the middle. So I have to draw a circle around there. And then we have to draw a square around that circle. I'll switch to a pen for this bit. And then let's go over this in pen, these circles that we've already got. So now if I connect the corners of the square to the top, I should have the exact proportions of the Great Pyramid.
Is it not just a triangle? Just an equilateral triangle? I mean, it does look the right shape, uh, like the right proportions of the pyramid, but it also kind of just looks like an equilateral triangle. Let's measure it. I don't know. It is. It's a bit different. Cool. Cool stuff. And then it's the same with all the other corners as well. Typical. On the last line, the ruler moved. Yeah, there you go. That's how you draw that diagram from the book. And real quick, if you want more geometric art tutorials, sign up to the Geometer's Circle. I post a new one every full moon. All right, what should we look at next? Halflings and thirdlings. Oh yeah, this is pretty interesting. The circle inside each of these figures is exactly half the size of the surrounding circle. A close but not perfect marriage is between five and eight, whose geometries often play with one another. In both these diagrams, the inner circle could be the size or orbit of the planet Mercury if the outer circle is taken as being the size or orbit of the Earth. That's pretty interesting. So this one we just did. That's just, that's just this, but without the great pyramids and the squares around it. This one is just an octogram with a circle in the center. Should we draw it? You want to draw it? Maybe we can draw it and compare <laughs> compare the size of the circles. Uh, or should we draw these? These look quite interesting. Are they all the same? No. Right, first let's do an octogram. So the octogram is pretty simple. We'll draw a line down the middle and then we're going to draw the circle. And then I need my horizontal line so we'll go up to the top compass to any size put an arc there down to the bottom cross that arc then i'll connect those two points together the center and the arc the cross rather there we go we got four and then we have to set the compass back to the size of the first circle come up to the top put an arc on the left arc on the right Come down to the bottom, do the same thing. And then do it on the left and right as well, so that it crosses those arcs. And then I can join those together, going through the center. And we got eight. So let's go around this circle with a pen. And then we can connect these points to make the octogram. And then we just need to pick any one of these points connect it to the center, making sure that it crosses this line of this square. So we'll go with that one. Connect it to the center. I'll just put the line there. And then I can use that as a guide to tell me where I need to put the compass for the circle. That should be good. There it is. So let's see how close that actually is. So that's the size of that circle. And then this one, oh yeah, it's pretty much exact. Interesting. So what should we have a look at next? I think, well, let's do these. An equilateral triangle defines two circles, one half the size of the other. And this one, two nested squares define two circles Again, one half the size of the other. Let's do it. All right then, so this one we'll start off with a circle. I'll draw it in pen. And I'm gonna put a mark at the top and the bottom of the circle. And then 
back to pencil in the compass, set it to the size of that first circle. And I'll come down to the bottom and I'll put a mark on the left and a mark on the right. Then I can connect those two points together and connect it to the top. Do the same on the other side. And then for the circle in the middle, we have to connect the center point to the bottom of the bigger circle and draw a line that crosses the triangle. And then just set the compass to that intersection and it should draw a circle right in the middle of the triangle. And then to prove that these this circle is half the size of the bigger circle, the diagram shows two more circles to the left and right. So to do that, we need to find a horizontal. And I'll just put a mark on the left and right of that circle. Set the compass to the size of the circle. And then we'll draw one on the left. Hopefully it fits. And one on the right. Not bad. And then for the nested squares, we're gonna need a circle. And we'll divide that circle straight down the middle. And then we need to find the horizontal line again. So open up the compass to any size, draw an arc, come down to the bottom cross that arc and connect that cross to the center. And then we can draw in our first square by connecting all these points together. Then I gotta take my compass, set it back to the size of the first circle and I'm gonna come up to the top and I'm gonna put a mark on the left and the right of the circle. I'll do the same thing at the bottom. Then I'm gonna do it on the left and right as well. And then these points are gonna tell me where to draw the square inside of the square. So by connecting these two That'll be the top of the square. These two will be the side of the square. Hopefully it goes well. Okay, let's go over it in ink. In the moment of truth, will this circle fit? Nice, and then we'll draw the two circles beside it. Not bad.